resonate with us and we can resonate with them. Gabriella and Johan, you guys are amazing. You've been such an encouragement to us and to our church. We just have loved having you a part of it and uh, just so thrilled as well that you got to come and, and see the venue for the first time and be here in this new studio, which is pretty cool, by the way. The team are doing such a great job, but I can't wait to meet you guys in person. I have loved all the interaction online and I just love the way that God moves the pieces and helps and together through different people in different moments, it just enables us to discover who God is in an increased way, which is incredible. And actually for all of those who have been joining us online and you have yet to be here, we're looking forward to meeting you. Seriously, it is gonna be such a celebration when it happens. But I'm really excited about sharing what God's put in my heart. But before we go there today, I wanna let everybody know where we're at with Legacy. All right, so over here, we have our Legacy update. And just quickly, if you're new to church and you're wondering, well, what is Legacy? This is all about us being able to extend and reach the vision that God has entrusted us. And for us, a huge part of that is our community reach and being able to be at the church that God has called us to be. And we're believing that by the end of 2020, we're gonna be in a position to be able to have $20 million worth of community impact, where we will tangibly and practically help those in need in the communities around us, all right? Both here in New Zealand and Australia and beyond, which is pretty cool. Now, to be able to do that, we need to be in a position where we can be debt free with our current facilities. And so we've been believing over three and a half years that we would be able to raise $45 million. I know, sounds enormous, doesn't it? Sounds like a God-sized target. Well, the good news is, is God has been on the move and He's been using us. And it is so exciting to let you know that as of July, when we started our final ascent, we had received 36.8 million, pledged 4.4 and needed 3.8. And that's an amazing place to be in within three years. Last month, we let you know that we had received 39.6, had pledged 4.8 and only needed $600,000. So more people are getting on board. More people have been able to fulfill what God has put in their heart. It's so exciting. But I know you're saying, well, where are we today? Drum roll, drum roll. Today, we are in a position where we have received $40.3 million. We have a pledge of 4.3 which means we are in a position where we only have $400,000 that we are still believing God for and believing that together we can see this fulfilled. Absolutely amazing. How good is God? And can I just encourage you, if you've yet to be a part of the Legacy team, then simply jump on legacy2020.org, find out more information and look at how you can play your part. All of us can together see this absolute miracle fulfilled. I'm so excited about it. And I trust as well that for all of us, we're ready for a move of God in this area. Well, I do wanna jump into the message, but I'd love to pray before we start. Father, right now, we just come and we still our hearts. We take a moment to honour you and thank you for this legacy journey and just the legacy miracle in motion that we are a part of. What an honour to be a part of what you are building, what you are doing. Right now, Lord, we still our hearts and we say, we just want your presence to fill us. We want your presence to meet us. We want you to speak. And God, right now, I just give this moment to you and I say, Lord, would your words take over? Would what's in your heart be the thing that leads us forward in this time? And God, would you deposit something inside of us that is far greater than any natural word? Let it be from heaven today. We love you and we're listening. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen, Amen. Well, we are talking about and have been talking about Jesus is. Just think for a second. When you hear Jesus is, what are the first three words that you put on the end of that? All right, what are the first three words? He is right now, the stuff that's coming out, maybe it's like He is friend, He is comforter, He is healer, He's my Saviour. Those are incredible things. Jesus is. Yes, He is a healer and yes, He is hope and He is the Creator. In fact, the Bible says that He's the Lion from the tribe of Judah. It says that He is the uh, Deliverer. It talks about the fact that He's the Alpha and the Omega. It talks about the fact that He is wisdom, that He is powerful, that He's our Protector, He's our Redeemer, He's our Cornerstone, He's my Rock, He is the Truth. He's the Messiah, He's the Saviour, He's the promised coming King. He is joy, He is peace, He is love, He is life, He is alive. <laughs> he is Jehovah Shammah, 
the Lord that is here and He is Emmanuel, the God that is with us. And I tell you what, that's what I wanna talk about today. The fact that we have a God that is with us, that Jesus, He's here. You know, the incredible thing is that Jesus is all these things without us, but He is all these things for us. And we're gonna use a lot of Scripture today, but I wanna start from this place in Matthew 28. And it's Jesus and He's talking to His disciples, to His crew, all right? He's like, I'm gonna go, but here's the commission, all right? We know it to be the Great Commission. And And it starts here, it says in verse 19, it says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Isn't that unbelievable? That He's giving them this commission. He's telling them this is the purpose. This is what's gonna happen. This is what's gonna outlast you guys. And it's gonna go to the next generation and the next generation flowing down to the same great commission is for all of us right now, here, today. And... Restrictions don't stop it, all right? Nothing stops the Great Commission. We are called to go into all the world. But he makes this statement and he says, be sure to know that I am with you always. And it was like Jesus knew that what we need to hear is that He is a Saviour. He is the Creator. He's the Deliverer. He's the Healer. He's the Peace. He's the Joy. He is all these things and He is with us which is saying, you know what, you're gonna go through some stuff. Things are gonna happen and you're gonna feel a little alone and you're gonna feel a little isolated and you're gonna feel at times, you're gonna wonder where is God in this? And He's saying, guys, I am with you. And I know for all of us, yes, it's been great to hear of some of the restrictions that are easing, we've got a long way to go. And yes, there's been times where we've felt like, where is God in this and where is God in that? I want us today to hear so clearly that He is saying to you, He is saying to me, I am with you. Jesus is here. You know, I actually think that one of the biggest things the enemy does is he wants to create a lie that we would believe at points in our journey that God is distant and that we are alone. See, I actually think that his goal for believers is to try and create a perception of a void that there'd be times and there'd be moments that we would feel like God is nowhere to be seen. What do He not say to you? Come on, if you're facing a challenge, well, if you're facing a challenge, then obviously God's not there. If you've got no clarity in what's coming next, and for many of us, that could be the case. Well, obviously, if you've got no clarity, then clearly God is far off. I mean, if you haven't had the breakthrough that you're believing for and you're seeing the breakthrough in that guy and you're seeing the breakthrough in that family and you're seeing them get the miracle, but you're not getting it, well, obviously it's because you're on your own. And maybe even that maybe God's disappointed with you. Maybe that God's standing there and He's looking at you wondering, gosh, when will they get it all together? Can I tell you lies, lies, a whole lot of lies. The enemy is the crafter and the creator of lies. And all He wants to do is make you feel distant from the one who actually cannot be distanced from you. He cannot be at arm's length. He cannot be in another world, in another space, thinking about another person and not have you in the forefront of His heart and His mind. You are the one that He sees. I am the one that He sees. God is big enough to envelop all of us in all places, at all times, on the mountaintop, at the valley below. But our... Uh, God wants you to know, wants me to know, I'm going to say it a thousand times that He's with us, that He's with us. Come on, if the enemy right now is trying to create a void and fill you with uncertainty, if he can put uncertainty into our situation, into our circumstance, into the future, into the, the, the provision that we're in right now, and when we are in a place of lack of ease, where we don't have that a sense of assurance and peace, we find ourselves lacking security. And when we lack security and we lack that assurance that we need to be able to take the steps or make the decisions we need to make or function, then the only space that we have left is to be filled with fear. And that's what the enemy wants. He wants us to live with fear. Now, I'm not gonna preach a whole lot about fear, 
But I do want to let us know that the perception of a void is what the enemy wants to do. But the truth of it is, is actually in God, there is no void. In God, with you, there is no distance. He is closer than a brother, closer than a friend. He does not leave us. And I think sometimes if the enemy can just get us looking down, if he can just get us looking at our situation, if he can just get us looking at our circumstances, if he can just get us looking at what's not going right, if he can just get us looking at our disappointment, if he can just get us looking at the injustice, if he can just get us looking at where we've been disheartened and where we've been discouraged, if he could just get us looking at what we don't have and what we, where we're not, where we, where we want to be, then all of a sudden we feel like we're alone. We feel like we're not good enough. We feel like God wouldn't be proud of us and we don't see Him because we're looking down here. I wanna start with one simple thought and it's not gonna be complicated today. I wanna start with a simple thought. If we wanna know the closeness of God and that He's here, then we must lift our eyes. Lift our eyes. You know, even this morning I went out running and as I was running and it was the early hours and the light started to come up, beautiful clear day and cold temperature. And as I'm running, I'm running down this little gravel path through these trees. The light starts beaming through the trees and, and I'm breathing and, and because of the heat of my body as I'm breathing, the smoke's coming out and the birds are starting to sing and creation's starting to have a song and, and you hear the hustle and the bustle of life starting. And I tell you what, as soon as you start to lift your eyes, right, you don't even need to see the miracle. You don't even need to see the answer. You just lift your eyes and you start to see the magnificence of our God. You just start to see the way that He ordered creation. You just start to see the way that the dawn of a day begins. You just start to see how big He is. And doesn't the Bible tell us, come on, that He holds the world in the palm of His hand? Come on, if He holds the world in the palm of His hand, who guess who's on that world? You and me, right? And we might feel like we are in part of the world that is not nice, that is locked down, that is limited, but that does not mean that we are not in the palm of our God's hand. And... And I'm running and I'm just thinking, wow, you're amazing. You're incredible. And I start singing, all right? I start singing, I exalt thee. And I'm running and I'm puffing, I exalt thee. Like it's just, you're overtaken by the wonder of how magnificent, how great and how big our God is. And when we just lift our eyes and we start to see, we start to realise we've got a God who is with us. He's all around us. You know what I've loved about the one element of these restrictions is the two hours a day where you can get out. And he's saying, get out in creation. Get out. Get out and see. Get out and open your eyes just to the vastness, the bigness of who our God is. You know, if we would just lift our eyes, I think for some of us, you know, the, the truth of it is, is we think God is hiding. We, we think He's hard to find. <laughs> Well, I don't think that's the case at all. Now our kids love hide and seek and it's been funny as they've entertained themselves over the last few months. And we've got uh, an 11 year old in Zion, an eight year old in Hope, and then we have Ezekiel who's two and a half. And he's just learning to get right into the game of hide and seek. But who knows that at his age, his hide and seek consists of him covering his own eyes. Cause if he can't see you, you can't see him. And he covers his eyes, right? And, and it's just like, where is he? And we all say, where are you, Zion? Easy, where are you, buddy? You know, and then he'll take his hands off and goes, I'm here. But what's classic is the other two, they know how to hide. They know how to hide. You know, Hope's got this great place in the downstairs room inside a Tupperware container inside the cupboard. Uh, this big container, it's classic. And it was actually quite funny. The other week, I'm on a... Um, a Zoom call with this national brand in regards to Christmas box and a potential supporter that we were trying to get on board. And, and literally I'm in there in this Zoom in this, in, this, in this meeting and in comes the kids running in, literally playing hide and seek, right? And they're like, Dad, shh, we're playing hide and seek. And I'm like, you're playing hide and seek? Hi, yes, I'm trying to be professional, right? And I'm like, sorry, you're gonna have to just wait a minute. I'm gonna, and, uh, and it was so funny. And so paused that, had that moment where I politely and calmly asked them to leave the room. But what was classic about it is that this lady that we're talking to, she was Zooming from her bedroom and her husband walked in with his shirt pretty much undone as he walks into the cupboard, flings it open, trying to find a blazer to go with his shirt. And she's now in that moment where she's like, um, um, um. It was honestly, it was classic. It was just a good time. But there's this reality that we can be thinking that God is hard to find. 
that we're, we've got to look for Him, like as if God's somewhat hiding from us. And He's going, come on, like, you know, come and find me, come and find me. Like, I'm, you know, and then as, as we get close to maybe finding me, He hides even more. That's, that's not the God we know. That's not the God we serve. No, the Bible tells me that Jesus came to seek and to save. So in fact, it's not about us trying to search somewhere to find Him. It's about the fact that God has been on a mission to find us. In fact, so desperate was His ability to come and find us was that He sent His one and only Son, Jesus, to come and to live amongst us and to live as God with flesh on and to give His life so that whatever barrier there is, whatever obstruction there is, whatever could separate us from actually having the God with us and having Him here now present always, whatever restriction there was, that Jesus would take that, nail it to the cross once and for all, declare it is finished and then come back and say, you know what? Relationship is ours and I've found you. I am with you. Don't you love that about our God? But we've got to lift our eyes. In fact, I think sometimes we're like easy. We're, we're the ones who have got our blinkers on. And when I can't see, I can't see you because all you're looking at is self. All you're looking at is your restriction. All you're looking at is the challenge. Can I encourage us? Lift your eyes. Lift your eyes. Lift your eyes. I love what the Word of God says when it comes to this fact of lifting your eyes. In Psalm 121, it says this. It says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you and the Lord is your shade at your right hand. And the sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. And it goes verse seven, the Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forevermore. You know what? What you look for, you find. What you look for, you find. Look for Jesus, because in Him is the help you need. In Him is the comfort you need. In Him is the deliverance we need. In Him is the peace we need. In Him is the joy we long for. In Him is the ability to find repair and restoration. In Him is that sheltering comfort that the God who is bigger than us, who is in control, has got us, that we are in the palm of His hand. Lift your eyes. Lift your your eyes. The second we need, thing we need to do is not only lift our eyes, but to know that God is with us and to live from that place of strength and confidence. Then we need to live convinced. We just need to live convinced of the fact that He won't leave us. That, that regardless of whatever takes place, regardless of whatever happens, He will not separate Himself from us. Don't you love that incredible Scripture? That's in um, Romans 8, 38. And it says this, it says, For I am convinced, right? There's the conviction. I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation. I love that. Nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That is amazing. It's so powerful. I love what Isaiah 41.10 says. Come on, we need some good quality Scripture right here just to land that. It says, Fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Come on, there it is again. We are in the palm of His hand. Come on, it doesn't matter if you've done all the right things this week. It doesn't matter if you feel like you're a, a, a perfect Christian. Nobody's a perfect Christian. You are in His hand. Troubles and all, you're in His hand. Challenges and all, you're in His hand. Triumph and all, you're in His hand. You're in His hand. While you're waiting for the promise to unfold in your life, you're in His hand. 
He's not leaving you. He's not forsaken you. When you turn your back on Him, you're in His hand. Now, I personally, as a teenager, I grew up in a great Christian home. Awesome families. Families, awesome family. And um, great values and, and real unconditional love. But it came a point when I was about 15 where I made a personal decision to say, you know what, I'm going to walk. I'm not ready to throw myself all on this. There were just things that were happening, I guess, in my social circles that put pressure of what would I choose? What would I choose? And I guess I just said, you know, God, I don't want to be a fraud. I don't want to say I'm for you, but then go and live my life like I don't even know you. So I'm not going to make make you look like a fool. I'm not going to drag your name through the mud. I'm actually going to make a decision to say, you know what, I'm not in. And so this one day I decided I'd, I'd walk away. I know exactly where I was in the schoolyard. I picked up my bag and said, God, I don't doubt that you're real. I'm just not ready to be all in. And I thought I was walking out of the hand. But the truth of it is, is when we are in Christ, when we are His kids, as we all are, whether we know it or not before, come on, whilst we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Christ put our lives into His hand before we ever chose Him. I thought I was walking away, but the truth of it was he never left. I want some people to hear that. I feel like there's some people listening actually right now and you feel like you've walked away. You've turned your life, the actions that you're living, the things, the decisions you've made. I've walked away. I want you to tell. I want you to know that he hasn't left. He's still with you. And what was amazing is that, you know, looking back now, I smile, but at the time I thought it was crazy is that I'd have moments where I'd like, I'd hear God whisper into my heart saying, one day, one day we're going to do great things together, Craig. One day we're going to do great things together. And I just used to think that was like a crazy concept. I'm like, but God, I've walked away from you. Yet I hear His voice. And in fact, old songs from when we, I would go to church when I was younger would start to come up. And I would find myself in moments where I did feel isolated and a little alone and a little, I guess, lost in a sense. I, I would hear the song started my spirit, started my heart, and I would find myself singing it. And maybe you know it. It says, this is my desire to honour you. Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. And all I have within me, I give you praise. All that I adore is in you. And it says, Lord, I give you my heart and I give you my soul and I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, Every moment I'm awake, Lord, have your way in me. And here I am thinking that I'd walked away, that I had created a gap, a distance from God. But the truth of it was, is that Jesus was always with me. I want us to know, this is not about getting us through a week right now. This is not about speaking into just a moment. This is something we need to hold on and hold firm to. Come on, for all our days that we have Jesus with us, that He is here. See, the third thing, not only do we need to lift our eyes, not only do we need to live convinced that nothing will separate us, we also, like I just said before, is we need to hold firm. We need to hold firm. All right, let's go to Hebrews 4.14. Let us then hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we have a great high priest who has gone into the very presence of God, Jesus, the Son of God. Our high priest was not one who cannot feel sympathy for our weakness. I love that. I love that. He's not going, why is it so hard for you? Why are you struggling? Why are you you making that such a big deal? No, no, he sympathises with our weakness. On the contrary, we have a high priest who was tempted in every way that we are, but did not sin. Man, I love that. You know, what is sin? Sin is to be separated from God. So basically he's saying in all of the circumstances Jesus faced, none of it separated him from God. None of it caused him to make decisions or respond in a way that caused division with God. No, it goes on in verse 16, it says, let us have confidence then and approach God's throne where there is grace. And there we will receive mercy and find grace that helps us just 
when we need it. I love that. We will find it just when we need it. It might not be days earlier. It might not be months before we want it, but just when we need it, right? That is the truth of it. But we've got to hold firm. You know, I think about this sometimes and hold firm. And sometimes we can think, say, if there was a beam here and I was hanging off the beam that I am holding firm and the, the, I guess the gravity of my life, the gravity of my circumstances, I'm just holding on. It's like it's me and it's all up to me and I've got my whole weight. I'm in my whole. No, I don't see it like that at all. I see it more like a rafting trip, right? And I used to be a, 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 an instructor, a guide for whitewater rafting. And we would say to everybody when it came to the rapids of life and the rapids in the river, hold on, get down, right? And basically you would nuzzle yourself between the pontoons, dram your feet under one end, get your butt on the floor. It would be all around you and you would be holding on to the ropes, right? And you would then walk your way or float your way or bash your way or tip your way through the rapid. And it was this whole sense of hold on, but you're not carrying your weight. You submit, you're simply but significantly securing your position. You're securing your position, right? That's not the gravity of life that you're holding on to, the gravity of your circumstances. No, remember, you're in His hand, but you still got to hold on. We've got to hold on to His truths. We've got to hold on to His Word. We've got to hold on to His presence. We've got to hold on to His promises. There is so much right now that the world is grabbing, yet there's nothing to hold on to. Financial security, nothing there. Holidays in Bali, nothing there, right? What does 2021 January look like? Don't know. What is this Christmas gonna be like? Not certain. We're trying to hold on to these things, hold on to positions, hold on careers, hold on to success, hold on to power, hold on, hold on to health. It's not there, but you can hold on to a God because He is here. He does not change. Don't you love that about our God? He says that I am the same yesterday, today and forever. And it's not due to your ability to hold on that everything works. No, you're in my hand, but you've got to secure the position. Secure that position. And then the rapids of life actually don't need to be the thing that you fear. They're actually in a rafting trip are the fun. They're the moments everyone looks back on and goes, wow, it's not the smooth water that everybody goes, that was so worth it. It actually is the getting through of the turbulent stuff, the waterfalls and all of the craziness that when you get through that, everyone goes, wow, that was amazing. And I have been so encouraged. Nadia and I have been so encouraged by how many people have just been emailing in and saying, you know what? This year naturally it has looked a mess. But I gotta say, God has been more present than ever. He's protected our family. He's protected our income. He's protected our health. He's protected this. He's drawn us close. I feel like I I know Him more than ever before. He's brought clarity to the decision from here where we're called to go. Don't you love that about God? But we've got to hold on. And see, if we don't hold on, what we're going to end up doing is hurting our heart. We're going to hurt our heart when we have a damaged heart. We start getting disgruntled and we start uh, looking at things from a viewpoint that, is, that it were never the way it was meant to be. But when you hold on, you might get calloused hands, but you'll never get a calloused heart. Let's develop that. Come on, that ability to hold on, not let go. Come on, hold on to the hope that anchors you. Hold on to the peace that surpasses all understanding. Hold on to the mercy that renews in the morning. Come on, hold on to the joy that strengthens and the love that's never ending, the grace that makes a way and the promises that never fail. What are we holding on to? We're holding on to Jesus. Hold on, hold on. See, what I love though, about this whole idea of who Jesus is, creator, author, you know, He's he's life, He's abundance, he's, He's all things, He's everything, is that, When we describe who He is, those three things, those four things you mentioned at the start, they should not just describe Him, but they should profoundly define us. They should define us. When we declare who He is and when we know who He is, it should not be just something of a statement of a title of who He is, but it really should arrange and align who we are. Determine the decisions we make. Determine the way that we live. Determine the place that we come from and the place we live from. And I want to just go to this thought real quick, but it's pretty significant, I believe. And it's this whole idea of being Christ in us and us in Christ. 
Christ in us and us in Christ. Right? Doesn't the Bible say in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that he who is in Christ is a new creation. The old has gone. Behold, all things have become new. All things have become new. Now, I don't know about what it's like in your family, but right now it feels like there is home renovation shows on all the time. Thank you, my beautiful wife. You know, the block all the time. The fixer upper all the time. Restored by the Fords all the time. And it's amazing in the restoration shows how often they go in and they think that what's under what's there now is the original. And they pull off that only to find that somebody else has done another cover up. Someone else slapped something else on there. But when we're in Christ and we give our life to Christ, it's not about the addition of Christ on top of everything that was there. No, it's going back to the original. It's about getting back to the fact of what we were created to be. Now, I wanna go to Galatians 2.20 and Paul speaking. He says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me, right? We've talked about this, but this is the amazing thing. He says, and the life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. Which is basically Him saying that, yes, grace has flowed to me, but it also flows from me. Jesus' hope flowed to me, but you know what? I'm a vessel for His hope to flow from me. Jesus' healing met me, changed me, restored me, but that same restoring power of God, that same healing power of God, that same changing power of God now flows from me. So it's not just it to me, but it's what flows through me. I am in Christ. He is in me. There's a transaction that takes place. And I don't know about you, But as we come to a close, I'm praying that right now that should stir some hearts, that should build some confidence. And the fact is that we, yes, have a God that is with us, but He's not just with us towards us, but He's flowing in us to flow through us. Come on, we have been saved to save. Come on, the same message of hope that we receive is the same message of hope that we can give. Come on, the same joy that He's placed in our hearts is the same joy that we can offer to others. The same peace that brings security in our life could be the same peace we distribute and deposit everywhere we go, stabilising people, not in who we are, but in who Jesus is. Come on, we've got to keep pointing people to Jesus. This is the time. We are not waiting for a revival. I believe we are in revival. It's time to point people to Jesus. Come on, let's live Christ in lives, lives in Christ that literally reflect the wonder of His love. Come on, let's be like Paul. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God. What an incredible thing to think that God doesn't wanna just flow to us, but He wants to flow through us. That our lives in Christ reflect Him. And doesn't He say that He is the hope of glory. He is the hope to our world. He is the hope to our communities. He is the hope to your family. He's the hope to the situation that everybody is facing. People need Jesus. You know, in fact, right now, I'd actually love the honour to invite and to ask this question of any person who is listening to this and you do not know Christ for yourself. You do not have His love in you. You have not experienced His grace. You don't know His forgiveness, right? His forgiveness, the Bible tells us, it wipes our past away and gives us a brand new beginning. It literally says that we get to be born again. And it's incredible because He transforms us from the inside out. You don't have to jump through any hoops to appease God. You don't have to try and change something and come back next Sunday to discover His love, His forgiveness, His grace. No, through an honest prayer, through an open heart, you can discover God for yourself. I've been believing this whole service that literally God has been knocking on your heart, just saying, I'm here, I'm here, I'm not far off. You may have never known me, you may never have talked to me before, but I want you to know you're actually in my hand. And you know what, you can discover Him for yourself. You can know a relationship with God through one honest prayer. And I would love to lead you in that prayer right now. And we're right with God. Come on, let's pray this together. Say, dear Jesus, today I open my heart to You and I choose to believe that You're with me, that You love me, that I am Yours. And today I make You mine. I believe You died and rose again, that I might have relationship with God. Make me brand new from the inside out. I am born again. I'm set free. I'm hope filled. 
I am a child of God. From this day forward, in Jesus' Name, Amen. Amen and Amen. While we're all celebrating the incredible decision that you've made and maybe you prayed that prayer for not the first time, but it was a moment of getting your life back right with God. You once knew Him, but like me, you walked away for a season, but today you've come home. Or maybe it was your very first time discovering God. What an incredible moment. You'll notice if you're in the chat or able to see that, that hearts are flying and people are saying congratulations, which is incredible. Um, I would love to take a moment just to really honour the decision you've made and to let you know that this is not a one moment, one time thing, but this is a journey that you've embarked on. This is now living a life in a whole new direction. Once we walked without Him, but now we're walking with Him. And how do we do that? Real simply and real quickly, first thing is engage Him in your life. Just talk to Him like you'd talk to me or you'd talk to other family or friends. Just talk to Him, engage Him in your life. Secondly, you need to keep ensuring that you get God's Word into your life. He wants to talk to you, all right? So He's gonna speak into your heart, but also He's gifted us this Bible. God gave us His Word that He could speak into our lives, every area of our life and direct us in the life that we live. We would love to send you this this week. All right, so for every person who made that decision, whether the first time or recommitment, what I'd love you to do is if you're in the chat, you can click the raise hand button that says, you know what, I made that decision. I prayed that prayer, amazing. Or if you can't get to the chat, you see below me the URL, a QR code that you can scan. Please do that right now, all right? And enable us to get this to you this week. And then we would love to just help you as much as we can. That Alpha course that Gabriella talked about, which talks about the foundations of faith and who God is. We'd love you to be a part of that next time we run it. And again, just help explore the wonder of a life in Christ. Come on, and Christ in us. God is with us. You know, church, I really pray that uh, again, this may not be a somewhat of a new concept. <laughs> I know for most of us to know that God's with us isn't new, but I pray that the closeness of His presence, come on, the reassurance that wherever you stand right now, God is with you and God is for you and God will lead the way. I would love to pray right now just for the closeness, come on, and the power of God to do something in the heart of all of us that would cause us to live a courageous life, that would cause us to step up and to step out into all that He has in this season, that we will not be held back in the Name of Jesus. Come on, let's pray as we close. Father, I do thank You that You are the God that is with us, that You are Emmanuel, that You are all powerful, that You are the Creator, that You are the Alpha and the Omega, and Lord, that You hold us in Your hand. And Father, I pray, Lord, that that wouldn't just be a comforting statement for us today, but I pray right now by the power of Your Holy Spirit that You would meet every single one of us, that Your Holy Spirit would somewhat be aflamed, that there would be a confirmation in our hearts, that we would know that we were able to step out in You, that we are able to take bold leaps of faith in You, that we are able to overcome in You, that we are able to triumph in You, for You are with us. And I thank You for the promise of Your Word that says You will never leave us nor forsake us. For therefore, be strong and courageous. I pray for fresh courage, fresh strength over every single person. As we go into this week, I believe breakthrough for You are an overcoming God. And I declare this in the Name of Jesus. Can you say Amen? Amen and Amen. Oh, we love You so much and we trust as well that God is moving in your life in this time. I know that He is. I know that He is. Again, if you need any assistance, if you need us to support you in any way, please just reach out, info at lifeau.org. We can help, all right? We're here to do this journey with you. Also, I want you to keep an eye on your inbox this week. Going to send you an email that's going to help uh, you know how collectively we can keep just bringing emphasis to our MPs about the significance of the church, the essential reality of the church being active and being able to function as best possible, as open as possible. We need to keep raising our voice in this season. But I trust you're going to have an awesome rest of the day, a great week, and we're believing for the storm to take out the grand final.